In this edition, we're going to look at the new Android set-top box from Avox. This is the model A4. It's a 4K compatible Android TV or IP TV box. So I'm going to open this one up, put it through its paces, try loading a repository, and see what it does. And check out the performance. This one's so new, I haven't even broken the seal yet. So this is an official unboxing, as I haven't even looked at this thing. I don't know what's in the box. But we're going to open it up together. Okay, open the box. I guess we should go over the basic features first of all. It features Android 7.1.2, AM Logic quad core with a Pentacore Mali 450 MP GPU. 2 gigabytes of RAM DDR3, 16 gigabytes of ROM, it's got Wi-Fi, 802.11, BG and N, and it runs off of 5 volts, 2 amp power supply. So there's what's in the box, complete with dust. There's the unit, and what else is in the box here? What other goodies do we get? We get... A destruction manual and a little cloth for cleaning it okay what else is in here There's lots of other stuff in the box here I have a feeling we've got in this package we get an HDMI cable which is always nice saves me going out and buying one It's a about a one meter HDMI cable to connect the unit. On this side, we get a remote control. Looks like it's got a microphone on it for voice prompts. So there's the remote control. Remote control requires batteries. It needs is it going to be two AAA size batteries? Uh, I don't see one in the box here, so. You're going to have to get your own batteries. What else is in here? Is there anything else in this thing? Nope, that's empty. But there will be a power supply to power the unit. And it's nice that they aren't using a standard USB power supply like so many of them do. But here you go. 5 amp or five volt, 2 amp power supply with a little proprietary plug. Let's hook this thing up to the TV and see what it does. Okay, I'm all ready to go here. I've turned out some of the lights so you guys can see the picture off this thing. I'm going to plug the HDMI cable into the A4 Android box and I'm going to apply power to the power connector which is also on the back here. And I've got it plugged into my TV. You can see it booting up. Let's reframe my shot here so you guys can see exactly what this thing does when it boots up. This is the first boot. I haven't done anything yet. I haven't set anything up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set our language. Oh, cool. The box itself actually has a display on the front. Very cool. And we have to pair the remote. So, so it's telling you which button, the volume down and the page down right here. So we're gonna press both of them until the light the red light comes on. Okay, now the light's flickering. And now it should be paired to the unit. Now I can select, aha! Now I can select where I want to be. English, US, please. Do you have an Android phone or tablet? So if you, you can use an Android device, a phone or tablet or other device, to set up your TV with a few simple clicks. I'm going to say no because I don't want this thing interacting with my phone. So I'm going to let this thing go on its own. So I'm going to select my router and I'm going to have to put the password in. I put the password in, it's now connecting 
to my router. Connected successfully. Checking for updates. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to download an update. So we're going to select OK to let it download and let the unit do its download, its wireless update. Now notice that the time has actually set itself. If you notice here it says it's 2145, which is the correct time. It's figured out, I guess, where I am and it's now picked Pacific time. It's got my Wi-Fi signal strength on here as well. It's actually a neat little device, neat looking little device. I think of all the ones I've looked at so far, this is certainly the most attractive. And with that display on there showing you the time and I'm sure other information once we get into this thing, it lights up nice. It's a nice, a nice shaped little unit, nice and, well, it's a fingerprint magnet for sure. It's nice glossy. We'll be taking this thing apart, I'm sure, at some point and taking a look at it. So the software download is now complete. It says install now. I'm going to click the OK key to install it. It says tips during the update, please refrain from excessive operations. The whole process will take a few minutes. Please make sure there's not battery charge. I don't think that applies to us here because this is powered. So it's updating Android is what it's doing right now. So we'll just give it a few minutes to finish the update. It tells me it's booting. It said boot on the box here. Now it's come back to the time. The unit's now booted up. We'll see what it does out of the box. So it's checking for updates once again. get a message telling me that it has completed the updates. So I, I selected to connect to my phone. So now it's I'm the reason I've zoomed in here is I have to go on my phone. I have to go to the uh, AndroidTV.com setup and enter the pin code that they've given me, which I'm not showing you guys, obviously. And I will pair the device with my phone so that I can cast content from my phone over my TV. So once I put in the code on my phone it tells me my device is now connected and I can select my account and sign into my account and I get a message that says success and I have to I guess accept the terms of service here The setup is now complete. And as you can see, this device is going to have all your favorite devices on here. Oh no, come on. Are we going to actually get to this? It's going to play from YouTube. I'm signing in as 12 volt bits. Cool. Do you hear? You, you got to be kidding. Yeah. This is the first thing that comes up when I sign into this thing. Let's get rid of this. So I can navigate over to my videos, for example, and play them on my smart TV, which I really don't need the box like this to play it on. But hey, it'll play it. So it'll play YouTube. No problem. The chip outputs a multiplex signal to your displays because each display, this is a Bluetooth remote, so I don't have to point it at the box. It's only driven one to control it. Let's get out of YouTube and see what else this does. So I'm just going to get out of here, sign out.
and just exit completely from YouTube. These are some of the apps that are installed. If we go to live channels, what do we get here? I haven't tried installing any repositories or anything yet on here. So go to get started. We'll load Pluto TV, which is uh, one of the apps that's built into this thing. It's loading. It's sort of like a weird little Disney ride in the middle okay. of LA. Imagine that. And then he goes, bring your flamethrower. That right. was the end of that Here's, that look, here's how I just I just want to channels called Cheddar, whatever I that think is. It's important when we talk about Elon Musk and his he has lofty, ambitious goals. Oh, the Young Turks. So these are the channels. I guess it's got uh, some channels built in. The Young Turks channel. Newsmax TV, Russia Today, RT America, live broadcast. First we saw it, but uh, where lots of Cubans live. First we heard a bang, then there were a lot of ambulances and police rushing by. Bloomberg News. And I think OPEC have been resilient to deal with many of those of those uh, issues in the publicly attended game. Mr. Met took out his frustration on the fans at City Field. In local oh, news, there's my guy. 27-year-old Andrew Sheets didn't think his vacation could get any better. A rerun of Spin City came on. And in other headlines, Terry Gilliam's backyard barbecue is plagued by production delays. So you can go but into different uh... screen and front doors, going fucking nuts. And a water skier lets go of the crossbar to greet those not currently water skiing. Be sure to let the news digest for 45 minutes before getting back in the pool. For more stories, videos, and a look at the world the of Onion. Hot Tubbin with professional hot tubber Rob Ryan, go to theonion.com slash review. The Onion's got a TV channel. <laughs> the New York Yankees earlier today. Nice. Fake news. It has Netflix built in as well. So it loaded up my Netflix account. Uh, because it is linked to my phone, it, it automatically logged me in. So we'll try loading up a program off Netflix. And uh, we'll see how this performs here. It's loading pretty quick. There we go. That was uh, pretty quick at starting there. So I don't know what's with this bar down here. It's, it's like the screen's not completely full size. So I'm going to stop Netflix from playing there. I want to uh, try and load... A repository on here for some other content. So I'm going to plug my USB stick in that's loaded with some APKs and it's going to ask me if I want to open this up with ES File Explorer. I'll say yes. I'm going to press the mouse mode button to enter mouse mode. And go over to the USB stick, the USB storage, and I've got my APKs. I'm going to load my media box wizard, install. I'm going to open media box wizard, and I'm going to just select. say some movies and TV shows add-ons so I'll load Twarium TV now when I bail back out 
I should have. Installed in the main menu here. And we're here it is. Twarium TV. I select Twarium TV. Okay, I see it's found a new version, so I'm going to just proceed with the update and then we will continue. So this should uh, take place in the background. I'm going to start it and let it sit and do its stuff. Cool. Another thing that I just noticed on this, as I was just doing the update for the Twarium TV, I left it for a few minutes while it was updating. This has got Chromecast built in. Cool. Okay, downloaded the latest version. I had a bit of a, a problem there because my router was kicking me out due to um, I got an Action Tech crap uh, router, and with the latest update, the 2.4 band has become flaky. And of course, this unit doesn't have 5 gigahertz. It's only got 2.4. So I, I switched over to my alternate router, and now we are good to go. So I'm just downloading the Yes player, as uh, I've used selected that as my default player. So once that downloads, we should have video playing through this device. It's almost done here, 83%, 86%. And I have to say install. This only has to be done once, right? So the first once the first time you get it. But you notice bottom of the picture here, this is my LEDs. This this is a set that one of the LEDs popped on, so it's been it's been bypassed. I wanna play this show and I wanna go up. Play. I'll just pick one of the links. it here for a bit and see how it performs oh as you can see the show is playing fine i can't run this for more than a few seconds but everything's looking good on it of course the downside to watching stuff this way is you get these bloody ads that you have to watch um i'm gonna go I'll get out of this i'm gonna go to movies now and just see what we can how this works for movies so i'll go and select movies And there's a tons and tons of movies. I'll just pick one. See whether it'll play. So if I go over to the little play arrow at the top of the screen, select play. Should now come up with a server. Of course, these ones that say cam, these are obviously ones that have been taken out of movie theaters. Here's some HD versions of it. We'll try that one. See how that one plays. So now the movie started. And it's not looking too bad, although I'm not real impressed with the HD quality of most of these movies. As I say, most of the movies on these pirated sites uh, are just of some standard quality I've found anyway. Now, of course, this is not a fault of the actual uh, player. This is just the fault of the source that I'm receiving. So I'm back to the main menu. I'm going to try the voice prompts on this. I'm going to hold the microphone button and I'm going to say open YouTube and see what happens. Open YouTube. Now, I've since taken this off of my account, so I've actually I deleted it from my personal account, and I've put it onto my test account. So this won't be linked to my phone. Nothing of mine will show up. I'm going to try searching and see whether I can search for some of my videos using the voice prompts. 
Search 12 volt vids. Nope, I have to select that. Search 12 volt vids. Now that's pretty cool. We'll try, I'll try and search one of my videos. Search 12 volt vids waves. Didn't find what I wanted. We'll try it again. Search 12 volt vids waves. Hey, look at that. I found my Oregon Coast 4K video. That's pretty cool. It's all done by just pressing the microphone button. Actually, that's very cool. Uh, that's the first one of these I've tried that has got that. And you know what? The picture quality of this is fantastic. It kicked in right away into HD. Um, I haven't tried it on my 4K TV. We're going to try it on the 4K TV next and see how this performs because this is a 4K video. So I'm going to take it in the house, hook it up to the 4K set, and we'll continue to test it and see how it performs in 4K. I'm only shooting this video in HD though, so you guys won't see it in 4K. So you'll have to take my word for it on the quality because I'm just shooting it off the screen and I'm only shooting it in HD. But uh, the quality off this is, is excellent. And it's, it's, as you can see, it's, it's very quick. If I want to go to one of my other videos, for example, um, let's uh, search out something else that I've put up. Search 12 volt vids Heath kit. Ah, there is my Panaplex clock. I click OK and it starts to play. Okay, I've got the unit inside my production studio now on my 4K television. The picture quality is fantastic and it's not dropping any frames and it is playing 4K. Now, it does have a limitation and that limitation is it only supports 4K at up to 30 frames per second. It won't do the 60 frames that a lot of the set-top boxes will do, but it does do 30 frames, which is what companies like YouTube stream at, and uh, it's playing it fine. I've had this video playing now for a few minutes off of YouTube looks fine. I know you guys can't see the 4K quality because I'm not shooting this in 4K, but it, the, the picture quality is, is excellent. It's, I think it's every bit as good as playing it on the TV itself. Let's uh, stop playing this. So I'm just going to hit the, the stop button here. We'll stop it. We'll go back to the settings here. If I go to settings here, you'll see where I'm set. Go down to advanced settings and display screen resolution. And here's the display mode. And if I select display modes, the options I have here, 4K, 2K at 30 hertz, 4K, 2K at 25, 24 hertz, then 1080p at 60, 1080p 50, 1080p 24, right down to 480. But as you can see, it's in the 4K mode, and it is indeed in 4K. There's our resolution, 2160p. You'll notice it does have a Netflix ESN, so it is a Netflix certified device. It will play Netflix, no problem. I've had it playing Netflix. And uh, if I go back to this Terrarium TV, which is the only one that I've installed on here. It's the only one I really am going to install just for demonstration. But I can uh, look up anything on here. Any of these shows that are available on here. Of course, I can also go to Google Play and load up Google Play and download any of the apps from the Google Play Store. So here we can download a lot of the Google uh, apps on the Play Store. Of course you can put in Facebook, 
Google Games, etc. CBC News, AccuWeather. You've even got Cody. That you can download. I'm not going to be downloading any of these for for demoing it here, but it's got all these apps that you can download. Next, I plugged in 128 gig um, EX FAT uh, formatted USB stick, and I want to see whether this unit will actually read the files. So there is my my USB stick. We'll go over to mouse mode by pressing the mouse button on here and load up. This, now this is full of 4K files so I want to uh, see what we can play here. So let's try playing my 4K Week in the Park video and uh, we'll just play it through I don't know I guess I can pick one of these players play it under video player and see if it plays playing without any skipping frames looking excellent we'll stop this and go back we'll find some other stuff that I can play here. Try this with the MX player. See how that one uh, plays. This is another one of my files. This was shot in 4K. That also looks very very clear I have uh, 100 megabit we'll try this one see how a 100 megabit file plays whether it can handle that looks to be handling that one no problem My computer actually has trouble playing this one. My old computer, my new computer doesn't. But my old computer has trouble playing this file at 100 megabits in 4K. Fast forward it a bit here. Yeah, no problem. My aquarium. This is not a 4K file, though. This is only an HD file still looks excellent. I have one other one I'm going to play here. I've got a, a non-standard USB stick and we're going to see if it's going to play. This is a, it's, it's another four, um, a 4K video but I want to see if it'll play this one. This one's a non-standard file format that's difficult to read. And this one's playing too.
So now that we've seen how well this performs, I'm going to take this one apart and we're going to take a look at the uh, construction quality. Let's go back to the shop. So let's open this unit up and see what's inside it. I would imagine that there's probably screws underneath the rubber feet, which there are. Are they under all the feet or just two? Probably just two of the feet. So there's a screw under that one and under this one here. And under that one too. I guess maybe it's under all four. I just didn't. Nope, there's no screw under this one. So there's screws under three of the four rubber feet. So let's remove them. Get my handy dandy Walkman screwdriver that everybody wants. Because you can't really buy these things. They're pretty much unavailable. At least I've never seen them. I got this when I worked for the Sony Corporation for working on camcorders and Walkmans and I guard it with my life because I broke this bit once because this is a very brittle bit and if you try to turn it too much it'll snap in two and uh, I had to order this this little bit which I've got stuck in there with heat shrink but anyway it does come out of here and uh, this bit itself from Sony was something like $45. I don't know what the whole screwdriver is worth, but if the bit's worth 45 bucks. Okay, remove the three screws and the unit should just pop apart. X-ray machine not needed. And there is the inner workings of the unit. But I would imagine it's, it's going to have the lights on it too for the, the lights. This is probably just the lights. You know, that, that's what that is. Not an antenna. That's just the, the LED backlight for, to make the top light up because it lights up blue. So that's all that is. So don't worry about that. Here's the guts of the unit here. We have our little display board here, and this unit does have an infrared receiver on it as well, right here. So it also has Bluetooth because you have to pair it with the remote or the remote just won't work. Here's antenna on the side here. There's an antenna there. Looks like it's just got a single antenna. We know it only has uh, 2.4 gigahertz because it doesn't see my routers. My routers have a different name for the 5 gigahertz band and it doesn't see them. So we know that this thing only has a single band radio and that's all they claim. They, they say it has uh, wireless 802.11 B, G, and N. It doesn't say AC which would be the 5 gigahertz band. Which should still be good enough bandwidth unless you're in a really congested, uh, if your Wi-Fi is very congested, you may have some streaming problems for 4K. But it, it only supports 4K at 30 frames, so, uh, but that still, that can have a, a throughput of up to 100 megabits. So um, if you're trying to stream a 100 megabit stream um, from your server, for example, it's not going to work unless, over Wi-Fi anyway, because 2.4 gigahertz is, in theory, can go... Well, in theory, can do a hundred and what hundred and thirty megabits in theory, but in real life, if you can push more than about forty megabits sustained through two point four, you're really lucky. I've never seen it go more than about forty. Um, you could get peaks faster than that, but sustained throughput, you're pushing it at forty. Fortunately, there is an Ethernet port, so you can always plug this thing in to your network. You get your HDMI output here. It's got an AV output. It's got a SPDIF output for connecting to your uh, sound system. 
but you need a I would need a spit of to coaxial adapter I would imagine which is I don't think it doesn't have optical it might even have optical in here uh, I'm just looking down through this jack to see if I can see an optical you, quite often you can see the optical uh, emitter if there if there is if it is a, if it if it is a compatible jack but I would imagine it's probably not I don't think so I think it's just a straight uh, it's just a straight type coaxial type there is a reset button as you can see here in the back so if you mess something up you can put something through here like a toothpick or a paper clip or a small screwdriver and you can depress that button at the back there and that will reset everything on the side we've got both a micro SD card and two USB they only appear to be uh, looks like they're USB 2. They're, only, they're not blue, so they're probably only USB 2. That you can plug a hard drive in, and it will read uh, extended FAT or EX FAT, as I've tried that. So it'll read, uh, it'll read FAT32 and EX FAT. I did not try NTFS, so I can't comment whether it will do NTFS or not, but it definitely will do EX FAT. Uh, here's going to be the processor here with this heat sink on it. It looks like it's been glued down. There's some heat sink compound here that has secured this heat sink on top of the chip. A couple memory chips here. Got another chip over here which has got a metal heat sink on top of it. That one's. And again, the display. And there's not a whole else in here. A whole lot else in here. Um, doubt that there's any parts on the bottom of the board. Over here we've got, what do we got under this tape here? We've got another IC. This is an H1102NL pulse. get a closer look at some of these chips. Here's a closer up look at some of the chips on here. That one's got to be memory. But here we go underneath this, underneath this one here. Soldering looks to be really good. So if I can get a little closer here. To get these microscopic views, I have actually got the camera only about two inches above the board. And that's, I think, about the limit of what this thing will do. Power input. So look at what's under that tape. These are going to be more Bucker boost converters in here. This one more than likely uh, the video processor I think is going to be underneath here. Yeah, you know, it looks to be it looks to be pretty well made. Here's that display. The display driver. And there's one last shot of the, the entire board. Again, I haven't pulled the board out on this, but it, there's not going to be anything on the back side of the board. These, these days, you don't see double-sided boards, right? It's, it's too costly to manufacture double-sided boards unless they're absolutely necessary. And with the integration that we've got today on... Uh, some very high, uh, you know, high scale integration on on uh, components. It's really unnecessary for most consumer devices to go with a double sided board just because they can lay everything out on one side. The uh, parts are all assembled by a pick and place machine, and then the board just goes through an oven to heat it. And it single sided boards are very cost effective to make because they can just place all the components and fire them. Double-sided boards are a little more costly because obviously you have to secure the parts with glue to the board 
so that they don't fall off when they're going through the oven on the, the components that are on the bottom side. So um, most manufacturers tend to avoid double-sided boards unless absolutely necessary just for component placement. So here's the bottom side of the board, and this is something I wasn't expecting. I was not expecting to see a double-sided board. And that's because double-sided boards are much more costly to produce because uh, in order to produce a double-sided board, well, you've got to heat the board up. So you've got to secure the components down so that they don't fall off when the board is being done on the opposite side. So it's a little more involved process to produce a double-sided board, but in this case, they've done it. This one has a double-sided board. Let's get a closer look at the bottom side of this and take a look at the chips on this side. So here's the bottom side of the board. I'll try and get my focus a little better here. The board's not quite level, so focus will probably change as I move it. Fair number of capacitors on the bottom side of the board here. Here's our connectors. For our USB connectors. Power connector. So that's a look at the bottom side of the board. Again, something I didn't expect because most of these units, when I've taken these apart, there's been nothing on the bottom side. So this is an exception on this unit here. So we're going to put this thing back together now. And uh, that will end this video once I get it back together. Don't know if it's going to work or not. Of course it's going to work. I remember years ago, some manufacturers would um, booby trap their devices if they didn't want you opening them up. And some people may remember this, but uh, I think it was done a lot of times more with computers and stuff. But for security, what they did was they, they put a photo transistor, just open, like a photo transistor on the board facing up. And... If the these were units that had battery uh, power, like for battery for uh, for for RAM backed uh, operating systems, right? Instead of having the code written in a, a ROM or into an EEPROM, they actually used a RAM chip with battery backup. And if someone opened the cabinet, there was a photo transistor or a photo diode that was looking up. And as soon as you opened the cabinet and a light hit that, of course, that photo detector would go into conduction and it would dump the power to the RAM. And once the power to the RAM was dumped, the unit was useless. It was an anti-tampering system. It used to be quite common, mostly in the computer end of things. But uh, I just remember that one time I fell into that trap where I bought something and I wanted to see what the inside looked like and I took it apart and just merely opening the cabinet rendered the thing useless. That was a lesson learned. I was always aware of that at that particular era of time when that was going on but fortunately manufacturers have stopped doing that because of course once word got out that they were doing this we just opened our stuff up in the dark right and um, didn't have bright lights shining around and uh, would open the thing up and 
cover up anything around where the batteries were with black tape and that kind of defeated the pro process of uh, deleting out the data but that was uh, an early security method that was done you know many years ago back in the i guess it would have been the late late 80s i guess mid to late 80s when computers were still relatively new and people companies were trying to protect their uh, try to protect their intellectual property by making things self-destruct if you open them up Anyway, that's a look at this, uh, the A4, A box A4. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to put this thing into service and play around with it a bit. And uh, again, I only showed you guys how to load one repository on there, but there's many that you can get. Sorry, I can't provide you guys with any links to where you can get that software because personally, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to know. For legal reasons, I don't want to know. That software that uh, I put on here was actually donated to me by somebody else. An anonymous user sent me that um, file um, as an email attachment to my Gmail account. So I don't know where it came from. I can't point you in any directions. That software is out there on the internet. You'll have to do your own research. Out of the box, this thing gets uh, YouTube. It gets Netflix and it gets uh, the live channels that were installed, but again, you're free to put whatever you want on here, and it does the job. A box A4, thanks for watching. We'll catch you again in the next one real soon.